I'm almost done with the, you know, proper iPhone 13 review videos, but I wanted to make this video because I feel like these are the questions and purchasing decisions people should ask themselves before buying a new iPhone or just anything in general. So these questions aren't tech focused, but I would say they're more like practical questions. And you might realize if you need an iPhone 13 or 13 Pro or, you know, not upgrade at all. So when people ask what phone should they get, I first respond with what's wrong with your phone. And I never mean it in a negative way. I'm just genuinely curious what's wrong with their phone and the deeper meaning of why they want to upgrade. So if you're generally having problems on your current device, like your microphone doesn't work, so you have to use Bluetooth headphones to talk to people, or you dropped your phone and something doesn't function like it used to. Um, so these are some pretty extreme examples, but you generally get the idea. For example, things like your screen could be cracked, your battery doesn't last as long, your pictures and videos just aren't what your current standards are, or you have to position the charger in a certain way for it to charge, or just in general of using your phone in a different way just for the sake of not upgrading, things like that. And you guys know what I'm talking about. So if you get frustrated using your phone because of its inability to function properly, it's probably due for an upgrade. Now, if your response to the original question is, nothing's wrong with my phone, I just want a new phone, for example, people with the iPhone 12, nothing's wrong with this phone, but people still wanna to upgrade to the iPhone 13. And my answer to that question is just get a new phone. You already answered the question itself. At that point, you're probably just wrestling with the idea of whether you want to spend money on a new phone or not. And my advice is save your money and spend it on an experience or just simply save it in general. No, I don't recommend upgrading to the iPhone 13 if you have the 12, long story short. Now, if your response is nothing's wrong with my phone, but you're still looking to upgrade, I would say wait for the new phones to drop and upgrade to the latest software, which has already happened. iOS 15 is a thing because chances are when you're looking at advertisements for new iPhones, Apple is marketing new features on the latest iOS version. And you might come to realize that you want more of the features than the phone itself. So when you upgrade to the latest iOS on your current device, you might forget about the new phones altogether because you have to realize that hardware is finite, but software is essentially infinite and your experience can be limited by the hardware, but it can be unlimited by the software. Whenever I pull out my phone and I apologize, I just got really close to the mic there. Um, I have the iPhone 10 and people who know that I'm into tech always ask me why I don't have the latest iPhone. And the honest answer is, I'm on the latest iOS version and nothing is inherently wrong with my phone. I mean, technically there is, but it's something that can be easily fixed. For me, is just the battery. It just doesn't last as long as it did when it came out in 2017. So that's pretty much one of the few problems that I have with this phone. So now that we have established that if you are continuing the path of upgrading your phone, let's ask the bigger question in the room, although it's not that deep. Should you get the regular model or the pro model? Now, this year is a bit different since the displays themselves are better on the pro models, but, ooh, sorry, that butt was probably really big. <laughs> I still wouldn't tell the average person that, yeah, you should spend the extra money on ProMotion. It's just that ProMotion is another benefit you get, and I'd argue that more people are upgrading for the cameras or the battery life than the display that looks smoother. Sure, it makes the experience great, but it doesn't necessarily impact the overall performance of the phone. This table is wobbling, so I gotta be careful touching this table. So back to the original question, do you need the pro or the regular one? Now, objectively, yes, the cameras are better on the pro model, and that should be the main reason of why you want the pro, the better cameras. But one thing you need to realize is the camera doesn't automatically mean your photos and videos are going to be better because this right here is just a tool. You yourself control how your photos and videos turn out. You don't know how many times I've seen people, or I should say, let me, let me backtrace for a second. You don't know how many times I've seen people hand me their iPhone 11, their pro, their Samsung S series. And I look at their photos and I'm like, 
how do your photos even come out like this? I mean, I don't say that. I say that in my head. I'm usually like, yeah, you know, that photo's nice. That video's great. But your photos don't automatically become better just because you have a $1,000 phone. It depends on you yourself. You know, at a family gathering, when someone wants to take a photo or, you know, at the end of a happy hour, you guys want to take a photo of the coworkers or, you know, yourself and your coworkers. And, you know, someone takes a photo like this, if they just push into the screen or, you know, they're moving while they're taking the photo because maybe they're drunk uh, or somehow the photo just doesn't come out good, comes out blurry. And then you have that tech camera person in the background that Loki doesn't want to be in the photo and they're like, I'll take the photo. So even though you can consider me a content creator or whatever society is labeling people that post YouTube videos, I've used and reviewed pro devices and everything you see on this channel is shot with a non pro Apple device. As a matter of fact, this is shot on an iPhone 11 and you know, is the iPhone 12 better? 100%, but I need a prop in this video and the camera quality is good enough for me on the iPhone 11. It really depends on how you use the camera and the phone. Like I said, this is just a tool. Your brain and the things you can extract and how you interact with the device is what makes this a better device than Apple just handing you a smartphone. So back to the original question because I keep going on tangents here. So the pro or the regular, now, side by side, you can tell a difference, especially if you know what you're looking for. But if you're just taking pictures of when you're out and about or on vacation, your pet, your family member, and you're okay with your current camera quality as it is, I would say the regular phone is just fine. I only tell people to get the Pro for two reasons, battery life, or you simply want the best of what Apple has to offer for the year. If you want the utmost camera quality as well, all the, oh, all, all the more reason to get the Pro. Cameras in high-end smartphones have relatively been the same for the past two or three years, so there's nothing to really stress over. So the other common question I get is, okay, well, do I get the Pro Max or the regular Pro? And I respond with, well, if you have a pre-existing Plus or Max device, because I know some people still have the iPhone 6 Plus or the 7 Plus or the 8 Plus. If you're thinking about upgrading from the Max from a smaller device, I tell people the phone is bigger and wider and it's more of a lifestyle difference. So I'll start off with the first two points. The beauty of skinny phones is that you can use it with one hand most of the time, like this. When the phone becomes bigger and wider, it gets harder to reach to the other side of the screen, most notably the keyboard. And what do a lot of people do on their smartphones? Use the keyboard. So if you're okay with using two hands, then you know what to expect going to the max. Now, let me talk about the lifestyle difference. On camera and maybe even looking at the Pro Max, it may not look big compared to the regular size devices, but when you hold this in your hand and you start interacting with it, how you need to you know, adjust the phone before you even unlock it, how you take it or how you put it in your pocket, how you take out it, out of your pocket and you know things like if your car has a wide enough space for it to you know just rest in the middle of the uh infotainment part i don't know what they call it but you have to kind of adjust to using this phone maybe your clothes or your wardrobe might change because you have to you know start wearing stuff with bigger pockets maybe for you know women they might have to um i don't know have bigger pockets in the back or a bigger purse stuff like that that's what I mean by lifestyle difference. Is this the best iPhone Apple puts out every year? Of course, but just know that going into this device, you're going to be adjusting to using the device rather than the phone adjusting to you, if that makes sense. Now, people don't ask me this question, but I'm sure it's something they say to themselves when they think about upgrading. I'm going to upgrade and when I take out my phone, everyone will know I have the latest iPhone. Now, nobody really knows what goes on in another person's mind, and that could just be your ego talking, but if you wanna upgrade to the latest iPhone just to show the rest of the world you have the latest iPhone, go for it, it's your money, and pick whatever color you want. Another question I ask is, well, now that you decided on the phone you want, how are you going to upgrade? And people are like, 
What do you mean how? Finances. So are you doing a monthly plan? Are you paying it in full? Are you doing a trade-in? Are you selling it your, your phone yourself? Now, you can back up your device through iCloud now, sell your phone, trade it in, and that will, make up, that will help make upgrading to the latest iPhone a lot easier. And I've discovered Apple gives you okay trade-in values, but carriers usually give you a lot more. Um, I would say just be cautious about whatever contract you sign so you know you're not locked into whatever. Just be careful when you read or sign a contract from carriers. Um, you could always sell yourself and then do whatever you want with the money. I guess you can say I'm kind of weird because I like to keep my old devices and I pay my new phone in full um, for a couple of reasons. I don't like having payments on stuff other than a mortgage, um, car payments, or anything business related business related like an investment and I want the freedom to do whatever I want with my phone from the moment is it is in my hands. Now, finances is always personal preference, but for the love of God, do not go into debt buying the latest iPhone. I don't care how fancy the B-roll is in the videos you watch. It's never worth it to go into debt for an iPhone, an Android phone or pretty much anything in general that's not a necessity. I'll leave it at that. So these are some of the questions you can think about that might make your purchase decision easier. If you have, I don't know why I thought a plane was coming to this building. <laughs> if you have any other questions, please let me know down in the comments below. I'll see if I can try and help you out. Um, hopefully you found this video informative. I appreciate every sub like and comment. Um, for people who are really early on this channel, you notice that the live wallpaper, or I should say screensavers are back, kind of helps me be more fluent not fluent coherent when i'm speaking so you'll notice the jump cuts kind of keep it to a minimum but as always guys much love oh by the way hopefully i wasn't too loud to the microphone I'm gonna have to order a new one the lab mic not this Ow. you've got to be kidding me